during your sleep. Most of the time, the master will take you to a higher level to learn and to see your duty. But when you come back, you must forget. Some of it, you must forget. It is the law that you don't remember what you are to do here. It's better for you that you don't remember much of the heaven life. It's better for you. Otherwise, do you want to die immediately? You will not care for dogs, cats, children. Nothing can keep you here. Really, you know heaven. One second you don't want to stay here. One second, I bet you. Even if master is here. You don't want master. You want to go. Many people experience the afterlife and come back. They know it, they cry off and on because they know the better life. They came by mistake to heaven. And then come back, you have to kick back, they don't like it. It's so miserable and dirty and filthy and barbarous, this kind of world compared to there. So, it's better that God closes the curtain most of the time, otherwise, we cannot bear it. Fancy knowing that your father is the king in the palace and you have to live in a dustbin. How do you like it? Of course you don't like it. You will run to the palace by all means. You will run, or you'll crawl, or you'll bicycle, or you fly, anything, to go back to your palace immediately. Don't worry about that. If you truly don't like this life, you'll never have to come back again. But I think you will some other time. After you enjoy heaven a long time, then you'll look down and say, Oh, my miserable dog is still there. I will transform him into a higher being by my blessing power. Let it be, then you're finished. As soon as you have this kind of feeling, you are down. As soon as you attach to anything here, whether good or bad feeling, you are down. You come down right away, nobody has to kick you. You yourself attach to this world. That's why many people get reborn in this life again. That's why many people cannot themselves be liberated from this world from the transmigration. Because they are attached to something in this world. But never mind, it's also okay to come back now and again. It's also boring in heaven if you enjoy all the time. You have nothing to compare. No, 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 at that time you will not think like this because if you have love for someone, it will overwhelm you. It will blind you, and you don't mind to sacrifice anything. When the time comes you'll feel different. When you're enjoying heaven, you're so happy and you have compassion. Then you'll say, I'll do anything to help that person because he's so pitiful. Suffering is the price for everything you use here. It's different because when we come here, the curtain of illusion is drawn. And then we forget everything in heaven. And time here, one second becomes eternity. The time span is different. Therefore, you suffer, but you don't see that from heaven. You don't. When you are in a higher level, different. At that time, you have all the courage of the universe. You will never fear anything. But only when you come down here, that courage will leave you. You have to suffer. Otherwise, if you come here like a king, and you suffer nothing, and you point your finger at somebody, and then he becomes an angel, then it's so easy. Then the Lord of Maya doesn't like it. You have to suffer for it. You have to exchange, like a business. You have to suffer personally for the one you love. He won't just let you go down and point your finger at him and then he is liberated. He owes the Maya king a lot of things. The flesh he eats, the road he walks, the water he drinks. The air he breathes, everything costs money spiritually. So if you want to take this person out, you have to pay. You pay by what? The Maya doesn't want money. He wants your suffering for it. Suffering is the price for liberation, the price for everything you use here. Because when you come here, you become an ordinary sentient being under the spell of the Maya so you don't remember. You are a Buddha. You don't remember that you are a saint. You don't remember you come here for this and that person. Sometimes it takes a long time to remember. And you suffer a lot even after you remember. Yes, it's terrible. That's why people in the world have to pray very, very hard in order for the angels to know, ah, something's wrong. Must be. Otherwise, they don't pray so hard, and then they come. Sometimes they cannot help much because they just say, what's that? It's only a broken leg. 
So what? Next life you'll have another leg, I point out for them. They don't know suffering. Just like Marie Antoinette when people said, your subjects are hungry, she said, why? They can eat cake, don't even have bread and they must eat cake. Because she have everything, supposed to, really, if she said that. But, according to history, she said that. Because she knows no suffering, she knows no hunger. It wasn't a joker, she wasn't cruel. She thinks, okay, if no bread, then eat cakes. They said, your subjects have no bread, she said. Then let them eat cake, that's because of ignorance. She doesn't know suffering. It's very difficult, even though we know, but we don't know. But, as I already told you already, heavenly beings think differently. At that time, you're very noble, you're powerful. Even, you can imagine, if you come down here a hundred times to help people, you're willing to do it. But only when you come here, then your heavenly power is shut out from you, and you suffer and you don't understand anything, you don't remember anything, and then you complain. But when you're heaven, even if you know, you're willing to do it because at that time you feel different, you're powerful and you're generous. But when you come down, you become an ordinary being, the generosity, the power, gone. That's what makes it difficult to come here. When we are in heaven, we cook at it as just playing a game, no problem. Never mind. Once you leave this world, you'll have your power again. You'll see different, and you regret sometimes that you didn't do better, and that's why sometimes you wanted to come back. Oh, if you come back again, I'll do better, so try to do your best here so you don't have to come back. Without initiation, you'd probably have to stay here. Even if you come with a noble purpose, difficult to fulfill, people forget all the time and enjoy all the material garbage and forget. That's how many people are tricked into staying here. The game is exciting here and people forget why they come. Q, do good and bad come from our heart? SM, the good comes from the positive side of our nature, the bad comes from the negative side. Mostly the negative side, we borrow when we come here. The environmental effect, influences and habits that, we've learned from the people we are with the company we are in. Just like you are not born a smoker or an alcoholic, you learn it from the society. Once smoking becomes habitual, whenever you see a cigarette, you just want it. And when you don't see a cigarette, still in your mind, do you want to have one? Or you wanted to have one more glass of whatever liquid, the harmful one. It's because you get into this habit. You are not born with it. For example, you see someone hitting someone else. When he is angry, then that person hits back. You keep seeing this image in your mind all the time of your neighbor or something like that. Then the next time another person makes you angry or hits you, you hit him back because you have learned that you've practiced that in your mind. Or you've learned it together with the people who taught you how to hit other people when it does not please you. That's why even twins, the same DNA, the same, supposed to be, split personality. The same person, same construction, same day and same minute of birth, only one second after each other, sometimes a few seconds, even a minute or something, it's not much. But still. One person grows up to become a star of a political or another field, or of a movie star, and the other grows up to become probably a murderer, a killer, a thief, or a violent person. It is because both were exposed to different environments. In learning this, we can easily forgive people. Otherwise, we think he is very bad. Actually, no one is so bad. He's just born with a tendency to learn, and he learns things quickly, good as well as bad. If he learns good, he becomes good. If he learns bad, he tends to become bad. Unless he has a strong will to resist it. This is rare. So the bad things do not come from the heart, but from the habit. Good things come from your heart because you were born with them. You were born with heavenly qualities, endowed with heavenly tools to come down. Then coming down here you drop into this school, with all kinds of things to learn and to react to. If you happen not to be strong enough and give in, then you drown. That's why I tell you in heaven they don't look at sins and virtues the way we do. 
They are very tolerant, forgiving, loving. But still you, yourself, have to check up and you will probably feel bad yourself. That's the final day of judgment. D. I always try to tell my friends how important it is to get initiated. But if they are all liberated with us, it's not so important for them, is it? SM. It depends. If you love that friend and that friend, even though not initiated, but she desires liberation. Or at least she's not attached to this world. She doesn't want to came back, then she gets liberation. If she strongly wants to go back, then we have to let her. We cannot force anybody to heaven. But heaven, difficult to go. Even then we can't force people good thing. They go when they want to. If your friend wants to, for example, and he doesn't know about the master. Or cannot yet get initiation. Maybe you never know. Outside they don't want to talk about it, inside they believe. Some husbands, just because of face and pride. They don't want to discuss about the master with the wife, secretly he reads the book when she's not home. Sometimes she catches it, because the books are arranged differently. Or he changes differently, things like that. You never know, the Lord looks into a man's heart, not what he says or what he does. So, don't worry about your friends. If they want to get liberation, they get liberation. If they don't want, nothing we can do about it. Even God won't interfere. Each one must live out his life and his desire. Only when your desire free, then you can go. Why should you force your wife or your friend to heaven? They won't enjoy there. They love coffee shop, karaoke, everything, rock and roll. Heaven may be boring. I told you the story about a man who has a friend who is gambler and this man is a psychic. When he meditates, he saw his friend suffering in a filthy place. He died, the friend died, and suffering in a kind of astral region with the filthy places and playing cards there. So he thought, my friend, I must help him. He has the power to bring one or two persons into heaven. Summer land and things like that. So he comes there and invites his friend to go to heaven with him a higher level, clean, fresh air, flowers, people beautiful walking around everywhere. And all the while, music and all that. And then he introduces him everywhere, beautiful palace, temple, people nice and all this. And then after about a few hours, the friend finally cannot bear any more and say, can we go back now? So heaven is not for everyone. He is dog-like. A dog likes his dog life. Maybe in exchange for a human being, he doesn't like it. What? Get up at 5 o'clock in the morning? Rushing for the bus and fighting through the highway traffic? No chance. And have to pay for political tax and all that? Oh. What for? Dog life is more beautiful, carefree. Except for wagging tail. You don't have to do anything else. You never know. Each one loves his own form. Even there is a story about Vishnu. He incarnated into a form of a bird in order to help somebody, liberate them. But afterward, he enjoys so much being a bird, he forgets that he is Vishnu. So heavenly beings have to come down and remind him he has to go back to heaven. He is a lord of heaven, second world. He say, what, to be a bird is so nice. Yes, look at my feathers. I drink from the spring, and eat from the berry, so free. What for being a king of heaven? I don't know what you are talking about. So nobody can tell him to go back to heaven until they have to go, and beg Shiva to come and help. Shiva just shot an arrow, killed the bird instantly. And then Vishnu is free, goes back to heaven. Then he remembers. As long as he wears the feather clothes, he can't remember he is Vishnu even then. He gets so trapped in the illusion, cannot remember. How do you know that the people like heaven or not? They don't. Not everybody likes it. When I was in Malaysia, the government made a lot of nice buildings, higher buildings, and clean. More hygienic with toilets and things like that, and give it free to the people. They're Muslims, they believe in sharing. These are free to them are very low rent, and the slum people with the metal sheet on the very hot and living under unhygienic conditions. The government moves them there for free, but afterward they move down. And they miss it. When they walk out, it's the earth and they like it. They don't like to live in the high elevated house. 
They're even more clean and free, they don't want it. So five generations liberation. It has to be up to their will also, and how strong also your will influences them. If you meditate, and you give them also a boost, a lift, a change in consciousness. So the more percentage awakening in them. Of course, you must be strong, you must be a good bridge. People they walk across, if your bridges are shaky they're afraid to walk over. SM, she says if any initiated people can take up five generations of themselves to liberation, then because I have so many disciples. Maybe it means the whole world already, because we have so many relatives. But I said no each one has only a limited number of relatives and friends, for five or six, even a hundred generation. We don't always have so much. Even we are born and we don't have more sons to carry on our bloodline than it's finished here. For example like that, and besides, even if the master can take the whole population of the world out to heaven, there will be other beings reborn here. Beings from hell or from other astral worlds of the second world who, without a master, must come back here, reborn again. Only the soul with master can continue to study and go further. The soul without master, even if you are on the fourth level, you must come back. If you don't happen to meet a master from the fourth level and take you up, you are a very high being, but still you have to come here, be a human, and then study with a master, and then go quickly. Or third level, even if you have no bad karma, but no good for you, you can just hang around there forever. There's no improvement, no knowledge, just okay. And then after some time, the three worlds will be destroyed, and you also are gone. You have to find somewhere else. You must find a master. If not, whichever world, you can't reach the fifth without a master anyhow. The most you can reach is the fourth level, but it's very difficult. You probably have some master in order to reach the fourth level. But those masters may be not powerful enough to send you up above the darkness into the fifth. So you hang around there, nothing happens to you, no karma, retribution, no bad things. But you don't have nothing, just hang around, and no improvement. So you come down and then do something, earn the merit, meet the master, and come up again. Actually, cannot cover the whole world. Each master has limited number to take with him. Not that the master doesn't want to take the whole world, but there are no affinity. If all of them have nothing to do with us, are we like one family? It's not that we are all connected with each other, yes and no not such a close relation. We must go by bloodline. For example, we have affinity with 10 people, or a 100 people. Then we will be born into their bloodline, in their circle, and bound together by this affinity, and become mother and friend, or husband and wife. We cannot always have relation with the whole mankind, even though they in turn maybe have some relation with us. For example, even now you have relationship with the mosquitoes for they secure blood, also same blood. But you cannot take the mosquito to heaven with you, we don't need it there. You can't just do that. And we go by affinity. Most of the people are being born again and again into the same group of affinity. For example, last life she is your mother, this life she is your father. Next life she is your husband. For example, just take turns and go around in the circle and become each other's relatives all the time. Therefore, we have just a limited number of friends and relatives. That's why you love each other. You must, coming and going all the time together. You cannot forget. You see, that's why when you have a baby in your arms, you love it right away, even you don't know each other before. Before he's born, he's a total stranger, and you don't even ask him to come. He just introduces himself into your body and then comes out, here I am, but you have affinity with each other. Maybe sometimes enemy, that's why you have love-hate relationship. Q, Master, why did we choose to be away from God? Was it our mind or our real self who made the decision to behave ungodly? SM, it's the mind. Okay, it's the mind. Before we came down here, before all of the before, we have agreed to play our part in this world, but more spiritually, more holy. 
And then slowly, we became influenced by the atmosphere of this planet. And we make some mistakes. And then the more mistakes we make, the more the planet becomes dense in unholy energy, so we just sink. All right. And then the mind becomes more and more attached to this world, instead of remembering God, instead of listening to the soul. Therefore, we sink further and further. And the soul sometimes gets very tired and fed up, so the soul leaves the body. And that's why finally, we leave the planet sometimes with still burden from the previous physical existence. Now that you see how those enlightened masters or good people have been treated so cruelly, you know that humans truly have been badly poisoned. Right? Nowadays, it's a little better. In the past, those spirits went around and whispered bad things to people's ears, or they used their own evil power to influence people, making them commit a lot of crimes. They influenced different people. Sometimes, a relatively nice person who is a bit dim-witted gets influenced, and then he goes out to kill people, and do bad things. After he comes to himself, he has no idea why he did those things. Sometimes, he doesn't remember that he ever did it. Then, he has to go to jail or get sentenced to die. They're really pitiful. Those people or beings are the tools of the negative power. And they want to cause chaos in the world. They cause some chaos here and there. So, don't blame certain countries for being violent or being warmongers. They are just influenced by evil spirits. More or less. But it's okay now. Now things are fine, a little better. We hope so. Yes, it will be better. So, don't have nonsense thoughts, okay? You have to do your practice well. So that you can help yourself and help the world, okay? Me, maybe people don't know that much. Because of too much propaganda and people get used to it and they think it's a nutrition and nourishment for them, so they don't know that much. But even cigarettes, alcohol and drugs, they know it and they still do it. Because human will is weak and the overwhelming negative pressure of this world drives them crazy like that, so they just do what they, whatever. To have a little comfort, even though temporarily, so that's why we feel sorry for them, for humans. And I'm trying my best to awaken them in whatever way I can. All kinds of stuff I do. Just because I know that they are just the victims. All the humans are victims of this terrible my illusion of the devilish influence in this coarse material planet. They take advantage of the soul's vulnerability and the innocence of the real true original soul of human. So they cast upon them all these spells, which is terrible, heavy, dark, condemning, and it is suffering for them. So they just think of whatever it for them, just a little bit of relief, they think, or seemingly relief, they will grab onto it. But they do not know that this temporary relief from drug or alcohol, cigarette, will cost them much more suffering in the long run. But even if they know it, they were so desperate, they still do it. Like desperate measurements. That's why they are very pitiful, the human race, very pitiful. Mostly at any period of time of our Earth, the people who truly love God are very rare. There are also different levels of God as well, and different levels of our beings. And as long as we are in this world, and we do not learn to understand the issue of spirituality, then even though we go to heaven, because the love of the Father is immense. Yes. He's will not discriminate. Really, you love H-I-R-M. Fine. You don't love him. He's loves you. But still, then we go up there and we have not developed. We're still the way we were before a selfish, stupid angel. Oh, not all the angels are good. That's why they have to come here and don this physical raiment in order to study, to learn how to love others, how to do service instead of just sitting there and enjoying the bliss of heaven all the time. And now we are given the opportunity to study in this school of life. If we do not take this opportunity and learn well, then we will be very regretful in heaven. No one else will tell you anything. You, yourself, look back at your life. At that time it will be very clear to you, like a mirror. And then you will feel very, very sorry that you were so weak, that you were so lazy. 
that you were so attached to the material things that the Father gave you only as a tool so that you could progress. Instead, you cling to these tools and forget the mission. Forget what you were here for. That's why many souls are wandering around in transmigration. They are earthbound because they are so much attached to this world. Even though the gate of heaven is always open, we don't want to go back. God is powerful, almighty. There is nothing that he cannot do. It's just that we don't have enough power of sincerity. That's why many of our prayers are not answered and we think God is not there. That is the trouble. Poor God is blamed for everything. All these wars, disasters, hunger and all these things. We just blame it on God or the hierarchy of heaven that doesn't help us. Truly it's our choice, the choice of the people who go against the will of heaven and the law of the universe. These people will make wars and listen to the negative force in nature, which we call Satan or devil. They are always there. That's how the negative world, this world, stays in balance. In the heavenly world, there's no need for this negative force to exist. Sometimes you read in the newspaper or see on the TV that ghosts manifest themselves occasionally and make trouble. It is because they have seen something, they know something that we don't know, we don't see. If they don't have the body, they have more intelligence, more freedom. When we have the body, we have also an advantage that the body protects us from many of the negative effects and a lot of negative knowing. If we don't have this body, then we will know too much. Know too much through the brain, like we will know who is going to kill us. That person thinks very bad about us, and that person is going to do something bad. We will know too much all day long. And then our mind will be bombarded with all kinds of negative seeing, feelings and knowing of the world. Even though our soul knows, but if our brain doesn't know, then we don't suffer so much. You understand? Therefore, we have this body to protect us from this negative atmosphere of the world. Nevertheless, when we have this body, we also have the disadvantage of not knowing many things that the angels know and the other people who don't have the body know. So we have good and bad. But nevertheless, we can have both. We can make use of this physical body to shield ourselves from the negative influence. But we can also learn to leave it when we want to, through the process, the technique of meditation. We can go out of this physical prison, and then learn something of the parinature quality, like we go to heaven, go to different dimensions to learn a higher wisdom. And then when we come back, we can make use of that to serve ourselves, our families, our nation and our world. Understand? So the people who don't have the body have less advantage than us. But only if we can make use of this life, make use of both the physical dimension and the beyond physical dimension, then we have both advantages. We are above the angels. And better than all those disembodied spirits, we have more advantages. So try to take care of your life. Make use of your physical greatness. Even though the body is a very troublesome instrument, it is also excellent, excellent. Actually, when you practice very hard, sometimes you don't feel the body. Is that not so? You have this experience? Yeah, you feel very light, right? Like you are driving but it's not you who is driving, someone else. No effort. That's how we achieve the effortlessness in the physical dimension. Then we can do many things in a lighter way. And we don't feel so exhausted anymore. The more we meditate, the better we feel, and the faster we work, and no problem. And you must also try to pass on the news to our fellow beings to rescue them from their misery. Try to comfort them and bring them the good news that they could be lighter, greater, happier in their lives if they practice the age-old wisdom, getting in contact with the kingdom of God within themselves, with the Buddha nature within themselves. Then they don't feel so miserable and worn out or blocked and feeling lonely in this world. That's the only cure for humanity. Otherwise, everyone will tell you that the end of the world is coming. Laughter, but so what? Even if the end of the world comes, we have security. We already know where we are going, so then we don't fear. We will have many other worlds to live on. It looks like so many disasters are coming to the world, huh? 
But I don't feel like the world is going to end so quickly. Maybe it will end in some parts. Maybe have a great destruction for different people. But the virtuous people, the blameless persons will be preserved for the next generation. And with the help of the positive energy from you during your meditation, during the group gatherings, during your silent prayer time, our world is preserved to a greater degree than we might have hoped for. And that's why I hope that you'll spread more good news to people, adding more water into the pool so that many people can swim in it. We heard that Peng Zhu lived for 800 years, it's joke. Why can't we live for that long? Our body is the exact same body we had when we were 20 years old. Some people have few illnesses, so their bodies stay the same, they don't change much. Some look very young, and they can live for a very long time. Originally, the body can last for a very long time, 800 years is nothing. It can last for 8,000 years, even 80,000 years. It's not a big deal. Our body is a wonder originally. It can automatically rejuvenate. Yes, our body can renew itself. It filters out on the poisonous gases, eliminates old cells and replaces them with new ones. It does a lot of work inside every day. It produces a lot of new cells every day, and about every four weeks, it renews itself. It renews the blood, skin and cells. So every three or four weeks, we should be rejuvenated, then we can live forever. Shakyamuni Buddha said that it is a very rare chance for us to have this human body. Why did he praise this physical body so much? Well everyone else says that the physical body is ephemeral and nothing special. It's because only when we have this body can we practice spiritually. It's not good without a body. Angels don't have bodies like ours. So, our body is extraordinary because we can train it even to fly in the sky. Today, there are still people who can fly. Maybe they can't fly very high, but they can fly a little. This is in this present time. There were people who could fly in the fast. Traveling on clouds is not fiction. People in ancient times could do it. Walking on water is nothing. Some monks in the Himalayas can also do it now. I saw it with my own eyes. He didn't sink into the water. He wasn't swimming. No, he stood or sat on the water. But if we live a little longer, we can train ourselves to have a lot of magical power like that. It's not a big deal. Imagine that Peng Zhu lived for 800 years. I'm not talking about 10,000 years. We used to wish our emperors to live 10,000 years. Maybe they did live that long. Otherwise, how could people think of this? It used to be like that. People used to live 10,000 years. But as we are getting more and more contaminated, our body can't repair itself in time. That's why we age and die so quickly. In ancient times, people didn't die so quickly. It was common to live up to 800 years or even 10,000 years. In ancient China, there must be people who lived for 10,000 years. Otherwise, if people hadn't known about this, how could they have imagined it? If they just imagined it like this, it would become a lie, right? If there had never been such things and you gave the emperor high expectations, this would have been a crime of deceiving the emperor. It is impossible that they gave the emperor such high expectations or impressions. So there must have been such occurrences in the past. It's just that they weren't recorded. Only Peng Zhu's story was recorded and revealed. In the past, many books were burned. Qin Shi Huang must have been jealous. He read that those people live up to 10,000 years, but he didn't believe it. In those days, he must have been very tired from fighting wars and feeling pains everywhere when he was in his 50s or 60s. So he thought it was impossible that someone could have lived to 800 or even 10,000 years old. That's why he was mad. He was furious. So he burned all those books. And we are no longer able to read the many things recorded in history now. D. Master, how long can the Martians live? S.M. The Martians, 200 years. Some can live longer and some shorter. 200 years is nothing. Some can live even longer. 
Just wait and see. The main thing is to have good air and good spirit, without too many complicated thoughts or too much competition. And with a peaceful society, even ordinary people can live longer. They can live at most 20 to 30 years longer. But our world is too chaotic, exhausting, and competitive. Everyday people have to work 8 to 10 hours, but how much money can they make? Not that much. And then they have to pay taxes, insurance, and this and that tax. Even visiting friends cost money. That's right. Even if you have paid it, you still might not get your airplane tickets. In some places, it's like this. You have paid money here and there, and then you can't make the trip. You don't even get a refund. How can there be such things? Is this considered fair? If you go buy something at a store, or if you order something, but they can't send you the item, then they have to refund you the money, right? At least 80% refund, 70%, or even 50% is good. But they don't refund people, and they withhold the goods. How can people do this? How can they call this democracy or freedom? This world is funny, truly funny. The more we think about it, the more we want to laugh at it, because we can no longer cry. Crying doesn't help, so we might as well laugh. We have no more tears to cry. We're too tired to cry. Thinking about your sufferings, sometimes I feel so sad. You are really perfect. Nothing you do can change your perfection. One day you will realize that. Because we try too hard to be something else, to be somebody else, and to please everybody else, and we forget our perfection. I realize that. That doesn't matter how bad you think I am, doesn't matter how wrong you think I do things my way, doesn't matter how many mistakes you think I make, I am just perfect. It's just in your eyes that I am mistaken and I am wrong and... Because I am trying to please you, perhaps but not good, because you expect different things. And you are a different being and I am a different being. And as soon as I remember myself, I know I am perfect. Even though I cannot please you, I cannot please everybody. And you still think I am wrong and I do things not the way you think correctly, but I am perfect. And one day you too will realize that. Not to be proud of, just to be happy. Just to know the truth. Yeah, you're okay, really. God loves you so much and you love yourself so much. You will realize that everything is alright. The only problem with us, the only thing that is not alright with us. Is that because we have to integrate with a lot of other people. And we are influenced by them and we try to think their way. We try to do it their way. We try to accept their opinions about us right or wrong, good or bad. And that's when we lose touch with ourselves and reject our own true self. And that's when we don't know we are perfect. We got confused in all this life, in all this happening. But you will realize it and you will love yourself more and you will love yourself the best. And then you can love everybody else, too. Take time. You'll feel free. Each one of us is given human life only for the purpose of realizing God. If we forsake this duty, we will never be happy in this life or in many other lives. To tell you the truth, this is the only reason for human suffering, and nothing else. If we realized how we struggled in our mother's womb, how we repented our past lives' mistakes, and how we promised God to utilize this present life in a very meaningful manner to serve HIRM before we were born, then we would never waste one second to think of anything else, but to try our best in all our leisure time to realize God. But as soon as we are born into this world, we forget everything. Because it is the law of the material world to let people forget. Therefore, it is necessary that a master come and remind us again, again and again, until we remember what we had promised to God inside the womb of our mother. We might not remember with our physical brains, but our souls, the ability of our wisdom will remember. Because God wants to bless the earth through us. We came down to be a link between heaven and earth. But because we have been exhausted and tired for so long, we have forgotten our great mission. This is why a master comes once in a while to remind us of our true nature. This is why we are here. 
Once we earnestly practice the exercises taught during initiation, we attain a balance between heaven and earth, being able to carry out earthly duties and to recognize the heavenly kingdom simultaneously. Since we have various earthly duties to fulfill, we should finish them as much as possible. However, our foremost duty on earth is to bless it so it may become a paradise so that all living things can lead a pleasant life while developing simultaneously into higher consciousness step by step. In other words, we serve to aid in the evolution of the universe, awakening and using the godly power within us. It is for this reason that we require the initiation that leads to immediate enlightenment, bestowing upon us the power that we can apply directly to best serve the world merely developing and unfolding bodily or physical power and offering it to the world does not suffice that is why our world still remains as it is today even though all of mankind is yearning for higher development and a better world it is time we rediscover this the greatest power in us as soon as possible so that our life on earth will change for the better and the coming generations may grow up in a better environment when we watch the present miserable state of our world, we discern only too well the absolute necessity for immediate enlightenment, not just to benefit us and our generation alone, but for the best legacy we could leave for posterity. That's true love in action. Because we live in this world, we would more or less be influenced by our environment and collective atmosphere and the negative or positive energy of this world. And so much negative, so much sometimes outweighs the positive so we get old we get sick also like everyone else because as long as we live in this world we have the so-called collective share of the burdens of everyone else and it's called sympathetic response if we love someone we sometimes share the pain and sorrow of their fate it often happens like that even physical pain emotional pain we automatically share with someone we love and I love all the people. Nevertheless, our real self is forever young and lives eternally. So I'm not worried about staying young or not. Our thinking can change the universe. When our body gets sick, it means our body is very smart. Because it has the blessing power from the soul. If we do something wrong, it knows. It's just that sometimes, if you are not used to it, the soul is numbed, or the mind numbed, so you are not aware of its reaction, then the body also gets lazy to react. Then it continues to degenerate and doesn't react. But after we become vegetarian, if our body reacts, it means our soul and our mind want to find a way to excrete the toxin. That's why we get sick. If our body is strong, then we get sick for a while and it will be okay. It is because the toxin is excreted after a while. The same with this earth, our earth. Why are there earthquakes and tsunamis? It is because we abuse our earth too much. Then it looks for ways to shake it off. Shaking a little bit. Understand? Shake. So, the worse we treat our earth, the more earthquakes and disasters we will have. The more violent humans' minds are, the more hurricanes there will be. It reflects at our mindsets. They are like deities who came here to do what we demand. If we are kind, the weather will be very nice, the world will be peaceful. If we are unkind, they will give us something unkind. They are like our workers at home. Whatever we want, they will do. We don't have to tell them anything. Our thinking can change the whole universe. So we cannot blame heaven, blame earth, or blame the typhoons or earthquakes. Everything is created by humans. Wars, killings, and those vicious thinking, etc. are all taken by those deities to use as tools because they think that. That is what we want. We are God, at least God's children. Whatever we want will happen. That's why the Bible says that we are the highest beings in the universe. Humans are the master of the universe, right? That's why Shakyamuni Buddha said that humans are the future Buddhas. The most precious life is the human life. The chance to be born as a human is as rare as the chance that a blind turtle that surfaces only once every few hundred or thousand years and happens to get into a hole of piece of wood that floats. 
Bye. Human beings are very precious. So, we should be pure in our body, speech and mind. We should not blame the weather, global warming, or that God doesn't rescue us. We are God. We are the master of all creations. We are the most precious, God's most precious creation, so our body has great power. It's just that you haven't attained the Tao yet so you don't know it. You said that I'm omnipresent, it's all because I have attained the Tao. It is no big deal. If you attain the Tao, you will be just like me, at least nearly as good as me. Regardless from which level one came down from. Within this body, I have exactly the same tools as yours although we are different up there. Both of us are on this earth at this moment, we both have the same body and we are similarly equipped. If you practice the same method as I, you will be just like me. You won't need magical power up there because you will be more powerful and you will be different. That's why we should keep our mind, body, and speech pure. People around the world are not that pure in body, mind, and speech. Many people aren't. There are more and more hatred, wars, and bloody fights for fame and fortune, and we commit too much killing. The animals also have souls. If we commit the crimes of killing, or we encourage that kind of killing, of course the weather will change because those deities follow our orders since we are the masters of all creation. The deities can't be compared to us. They come here only to help us. They thought they were here to create good weather for us, to give us refreshing breezes, cool, moonlit nights, and warm, sunny days with just the right temperature. But because we are in too bad a mood, we are too agitated, too violent, even the deities don't know what to do. They didn't come here to make hurricanes. But we are the masters, they act according to our will. If you work for your boss, don't you do things according to his will? So, whatever we want, they will do. If our mood, attitude, and manner are violent and turbulent, there will certainly be stormy weather. Because we are the commanders, we are the masters. Since we are the masters, whatever our thinking is like, the deities will make things that way. That's why I say that if the entire world eats vegetarian food, the world will have peace and the earth will change because we are the masters. Whatever we want will happen. So we should be careful with what we want. Of course, you want to be a Buddha, to be kind, to do spiritual practice, and to lead the very virtuous life of a Bodhisattva. But we are outnumbered by the worldly people. So now, we need to persuade them to be vegetarian. If they become vegetarians for the purpose of saving the earth, they must have a kind heart. After being a vegetarian for a long time, they will see animals differently, they will be more loving, at least unwilling to kill them or to eat them. Then they will change very fast. If you continue to go south, of course, you will end up in the south. But if you realize you are on the wrong path and just turn around, you will be heading north, right? You will surely go further and further away from the south, you can't be wrong. Similarly, if the earthly people change their mindsets and awaken their inner kindness, then the deities will also do kind things accordingly. It is because the entire atmosphere will become smooth and gentle. Then, of course, the deities will do the same. Now the masters want to be gentle. Let's make the wind gentler. Now the masters want peace. Then we cannot stir up more wars. We should not urge people to make wars, okay, no, no. Our masters wanted to save lives, instead of killing lives. Okay, let's change the killing atmosphere completely. Then there will be less and less killing atmosphere. So they won't be able to make use of the killing atmosphere. If there is none, how can they use it? The deities, for example, the rain god and the wind god, all follow our instructions. Whatever tools we give them, they will use. If we give them a kind and peaceful atmosphere, they will make use of that gentle atmosphere. Then we'll have favorable weather. Similarly, if you give your subordinate a knife, and then you think of killing another person, of course he will charge forward. They are like the troops, they follow the orders of the commander. If the commander wants to kill those enemies, they will go and kill them. 
Moreover, since they were given tools, such as swords, guns, or bows and arrows, of course they would kill. If the commander says, no more killing, I want to go drink tea, then the troops will put down all their weapons right away. The deities are also like this. The wind god and the rain god both follow our orders. It's not that we use language, saying, I want to kill people. I want stormy weather. No, no. The atmosphere we create becomes a kind of tool. That tool will be interpreted by the deities as, My masters want to take lives. My masters want to wage wars. My masters want big storms. That's why we have hurricanes, earthquakes, and floods, etc. They are all created by humans. But who can I tell this to? They all fell asleep. Now, we think of a way to shake them awake and say, Hey, get up quickly, get up. Our home is on fire. Get up quickly, but they are still sleeping. This is why I say we should be vegetarians. If everyone becomes vegetarian, the weather will change. This is very logical. The body is an incredible miracle. You can't run away from bad karma. Retribution, that is the thing. Whether it is your own or it is somebody else's, especially somebody else's. And if you are willing to take it, it has effect. And the body is also refined by spiritual practice. But the karma, retribution, doesn't understand about refined or not refined. The bad karma, retribution, is heavy, but the body is refined, so if you take a heavy measure, the body suffers much more. The body always tries to repair itself. All the cells are already programmed that we could even live forever, as long as we wanted. But we have been damaged. We have been reprogrammed into death illness and all that, and then as a collective consciousness, we accept this fact, like, we get sick someday, we will die one day. Everybody thinks like that, the whole planet. Billions and billions of people project this kind of consciousness, because some of them were sick before and everybody looks at that and says, oh yes, it will be my turn next, and then. The way we live our life, not clean, not health before, meat and alcohol and cigarettes and all that, I heard somebody say somewhere, like, if you ever touch a drop of alcohol or just smoke one cigarette that means you don't want to live long. You don't want to live long, inside you, that's why people give up, you see. Give up, say, oh, it doesn't matter, I'll die one way or another, so why deny myself of cigarette or meat or alcohol and such stuff, we become weaker and weaker. Our resistance becomes lower and lower until almost zero, but otherwise the body is programmed for us to be happy, healthy, strong, invincible, accepting accidents, of course. Every day they repair, they eliminate millions of dead cells and make new ones all the time. But if we over abuse it, the body just stop, it can't cope anymore, and then it just stays in sickness. So we just have to do what we can. Just don't drive yourself crazy. I don't advise that. What I mean is we could do anything we want to. Including enduring pains because it becomes so used to it also. It seems like natural after a while. What I mean is our body has even been designed to renew itself forever. And we are the ones who truly create problems for ourselves including diseases. They're all self-made. Truly, our body should be forever. Our body can be trained even, even after an injury. It can be trained to go back to normal. You know many people do, right? Some athlete doctors have pronounced that he could never walk again, for example. Let alone play football again like usual or play basketball, but somebody made it, some people made it. There are plenty of examples. Strong willpower and time and good personal trainer or doctor or coach, expert, help you. We can do everything, actually, with our body, provided our mind. We are mentally prepared. We are prepared to go through fire. We are prepared to go to hell to help. For others, I am prepared all the time. I said I don't mind if I go to hell. Thousand days, thousand times, thousand years, if that would awaken the whole planet and save them. Not to save them by magic. Because if I save the planet, they will continue killing each other, even if I can, without going to hell. 
Even if I know how, what do I do that for? What for? Save them and they continue to make war with each other. Develop more atom bombs? Space missiles dropping on everybody's head and continue torturing billions of animals on a daily basis? I can't. I won't do it, but I would go through fire if that would make them awaken and change their way of life. That's the difference. Love is unconditional. But my condition is that unconditional condition. The body is truly incredible. It's truly incredible. It's a pity that most of us abuse it and really damage it to the extent that it's difficult to repair even then can repair. Just like sometimes the employees of some factory, they don't agree with some things and they keep working and they don't get anywhere. They went on strike, yes. The body also went on strike. Now, the body of a human is much more sophisticated than the body of many other beings around us, the animals even. I just tell you an example. For example, the birds, the parrots, they could live to 100, 150 years old. So delicate. I mean, look at Sonny, he looks big but he's only eight suit, a lot of feathers and puff up. But if he loses all his feathers, he's about this much, only about double of the size of my foot. He could live up to 100 or 150 years old. And my little yellow cockatiel could live to 30, 40 years, like many of the humans. Such a delicate, small, fragile structure like a bird could live to 100. So, we are truly a shame. If any of us lives up to 100 or even 99.9 or 80. Oh, he lived to the ripe age of 89. You know that very well, right? Yes, ripe age of 89, something like that. And if anybody lives to 100, centenarian, or over 100, he's all over on the news. And when he dies, the whole country comes out. Recently, there is one veteran. He died at 112 or something. The UK war veteran, World War vet, everybody makes a eulogy at his funeral or at home by themselves, by distance, remote control. Everybody makes a big deal because he lived to over 100 years old. My parrot can well do that. The way they're doing, the doctor told me that they are going to live forever. Yes, they have vitamins even, have good seeds. I mean, not the 50 kilogram. Selected one, they go and buy those dainty packets. Human quality, human grade, they call it. I say there's no need to be so exaggerating, but you just become used to it. So they eat good nuts. Good seeds, good vegetables, fresh fruit every day, and dry fruit also, and that's all they eat. In the wild, they eat even less. It depends on what they have. Not so selected and not so regular like that, and still they live a long, long time. So the body doesn't really need a lot of food to live a long time. The body is an incredible miracle. We truly are very, very silly. We have been very silly to have damaged it. And then one DNA of this father, mother body passed down to the next generation is the same stuff. And then it's imposed upon us. It's ingrained within our memory that we are going to die at the ripe age of 80, something like that, or 100. There are only a handful of people who live over 100. A handful of people, and they document them. They put in the world record who lives the longest to date. 120 is the longest, for example. We surely should rethink the way we live our life as a human race. We have done too badly, too poorly to ourselves. And now the Supreme Master Ching hired the scientist, whoever, tell us. Please be vegetarian. You'll live longer, healthier. What is that? Vegetable? It's a pity now. If our ancestors, our great, great, great grandparents, great, 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 great ancestors did not start this meat eating, degrading habit, we, this generation, would be living long, long, and no sickness, no trouble. And all these billions of dollars of tax money would not be diverted into the hospital business. And so many suffering heartbreaks would not have happened between family members, between loved ones who've lost their beloved family member. It's a pity, truly. Just like flu virus, they call it the virus of our own hatching. 
We made it, and the poor swine had to suffer for it also.